This is Eyewitness News on LA 56 with live breaking news. Just ahead, breaking news, an arrest is made in connection with uh, a gunshot fired into an MTA bus, the very latest in a live report. Manhattan Beach becomes the scene of a rape and robbery. Now the search is on for the suspect who targeted a man and a woman while they sat on the stand. A wild ending to a pursuit in Orange County, and the whole thing was caught on camera. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jory Rand. And I'm Ruta Bey Shabazi in for Giovanna Lara. Welcome to Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. Just hours after a gunman opened fire in Echo Park, hitting an MTA bus driver through the windshield of a city bus, detectives have made an arrest. The person was taken into custody within the last half hour. The shooting happened just before 3 this afternoon at Bellevue Avenue and Coronado Street. And Eyewitness News reporter Melissa McBride is live at the scene with what we know so far. Melissa? Ruta Bay Sheriff's deputies had detained that suspect, but they have now placed him under arrest just within the last hour. Sheriff's deputies say that he had fired shots from a handgun, and one bullet went through the front windshield of a Metro bus earlier this afternoon. The driver suffered a graze wound to his head, but he's going to be okay. There were passengers on board that bus, but no one else was injured. The bus was going south on Coronado Street at Bellevue Avenue at about 2.45 today when it was hit by gunfire. Neighbors who called 911 reported hearing four to five gunshots. Once deputies arrived on scene, we concentrated south of us because that seems where the trajectory would have come from. And so um, they were able to identify a few individuals down there. And with the help of uh, some of the neighbors, that we were able to positively identify the shooter who we had originally detained. Deputies don't know if the suspect took aim at the bus or if he was shooting at something or someone else. One of the bullets hit a parked car on Coronado Street. All we know about the suspect at this point in time is that he's a man in his 20s. Reporting live in Echo Park, I'm Melissa McBride, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Melissa, thank you. Manhattan Beach becomes the scene of a frightening attack. A suspect targets a man and a woman sitting on the sand. Police say that suspect then raped the woman and robbed both of his victims. Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell has more on the search for the attacker. The attack happened a few minutes after midnight on the 3400 block of the Manhattan Beach waterline. Police say the victims, a man and woman in their 40s, were sitting on the sand when the suspect approached. Appearing to be armed with a handgun, he forced the man to lay face down in the sand while he sexually assaulted the woman. It frightens me because late at night I walk on this with my husband just to go to the bars and stuff and to know that there's somebody out there, you know, it's frightening. It's completely shocking to me. I mean, as a resident, we truly believe that it's one of the safest places in the country. Manhattan Beach is one of the most popular beaches in Southern California. Residents say there is very little crime in the community. The cops here have to come to break up a party. That's their tough job for the week. You know, and it doesn't mean that things don't occur here. It's just they don't occur here like they do in other places. All times at night, and we always feel so safe and jog and so forth, and it's just, that's a shock. Some would like to see more police officers at the beach. I think our police department needs to be on the beach a little bit more to see what's going on at, after the late hours, because I don't think we're getting the proper patrol that we should have in, in Manhattan Beach. Police searched the area after the assault, but were not able to find the suspect. In Manhattan Beach, Amy Powell, ABC7 Eyewitness News. The search is on for the man who assaulted and threatened to kill a victim on campus at Cal State Northridge. CSU police released this sketch of the suspect they're now looking for. Officials say Thursday afternoon, the man grabbed the victim's wrist in, on the first floor uh, men's restroom of the library and threatened to kill him. The two didn't know each other, and the attack was unprovoked. The suspect got away, and that victim was not injured. But anyone with information is asked to call police at 818-677-3826. An El Monte man has released some dramatic video showing a burglar and his violent getaway attempt. The incident was captured on video showing the suspect inside the home. Another camera shows the driveway. The homeowner had just come home. The burglar found the key to the SUV belonging to the man's daughter. The suspect tried to flee, almost hitting the homeowner, repeatedly hitting the gate and heavily damaging the car behind it. Luckily for the, uh, for the victim, he was able to recover all the items that were taken from his home, which included uh, home personal electronics and approximately $6,000 in cash. 
The 19-year-old suspect was arrested a short distance away. He was charged with burglary, assault with a deadly weapon, and grand theft auto. A shopping center parking lot in Seal Beach becomes the scene of a dangerous chase. It was caught on camera. Take a look. CHP officers were in pursuit of a suspect. They had tried to pull over for speeding. The pursuit began in Garden Grove just before 1 p.m. and 20 minutes later spilled into this busy routes and target parking lot on Seal Beach Boulevard. It all ended with the driver colliding with a CHP vehicle. Then officers took him down. Andrew Reyes shared this video with us using the hashtag ABC7 Eyewitness. Thanks to Andrew. What you didn't see is that at one point an elderly woman threw her shopping cart to try and stop the driver. CHP officials say that driver, a Long Beach man in his 20s, was found to be under the influence. The search is on for a man who carjacked a woman at Knife Point in Canoga Park. It was caught on gas station surveillance video and the victim is now telling her frightening tale. Noelle Perry says she was pumping gas at this Chevron station on Van Allen Street yesterday when she noticed a man staring at her as he crossed the street. She says he approached the front of her car holding a knife and ripped the gas pump right out of her tank. She says at first she couldn't believe what was happening. But once the, the nozzle came out of my car and I saw the gas start to spill everywhere, I realized this was an absolutely horrible situation and I needed to get out. She did indeed. Perry's purse was in the front seat of the car, but she says she got it back after the carjacker threw it out the window and then a good Samaritan found it and contacted her on Facebook. Perry says this isn't the first time she has been robbed. She says 13 years ago, a store she was working in at this same intersection was held up by armed men. Governor Jerry Brown announced that he has granted pardons to 83 people. One of them is an Oakland man who spent 19 years in prison for a robbery and kidnapping he committed when he was just 16 years old. All of the people pardoned have been out of prison for at least 10 years and now lead a productive life with no new criminal convictions. News of California's unprecedented drought is making waves across the country. Today, Governor Jerry Brown appeared on ABC's This Week and went on the defensive for his decision to exempt farmers from statewide mandatory water restrictions. It was a landmark executive order, Governor Jerry Brown telling towns and cities statewide to cut water use by 25 percent. But Wednesday's announcement spared those who consume the most water, farmers. Today on ABC's This Week, Brown defended that decision. Uh, look, the farmers have uh, uh, fallowed hundreds of thousands of acres uh, of land. They're pulling up uh, uh, vines and trees. Uh, farm workers uh, who are at the very low end of the economic scale here are out of work. Uh, there are people in agriculture areas that are really suffering. We're providing food. Uh, we know they're location. suffering, Governor, but let me look at those again. 80% of the water used by agriculture but accounts for less than 2% of the economy. Is that true? Uh, yeah, you bet it's true. But by the way, they're not uh, watering their lawn or taking long showers, providing uh, most of the fr uh, fruits and vegetables of America. Farmers have been denied water from federal supply. There are also farmers asserting century-old water rights protected in state law that allow them to access more water than others. The governor says as the historic drought continues, those rights will likely be examined. Despite criticism from groups like Food and Water Watch that he let farms off the hook, Governor Brown says taking water away now is not the answer. Farmers are getting zero allocation from the federal central water project. And that's a big deal. That hasn't happened before. Now, of course we could shut it off. If you don't want to produce any food and import it from some other place, uh, theoretically, you could do that, but that would displace hundreds of thousands of people, and I don't think it's needed. Eyewitness News is committed to helping you beat the drought, and we want to hear your ideas, too. Join the circle of eyewitnesses and tell us what you're doing to save water, or share pictures or video when you see water being wasted. Just post on social media with the hashtag ABC7Drought. Let's head over to Danny Romero now for a look at our forecast, because it's a little cooler, Danny. Yeah, a little bit cooler, Ruta Bay and Jory, and also a little... A little help, a little help for our drought. We have some chance of rain and snow coming our way. The winds are part of our weather picture as well. So right now, we're seeing all these areas in the bays under a wind advisory. Now, through Wednesday early morning at 2 a.m., we're talking 25, 35 mile per hour sustained winds and occasional gusts.
in that 50, 60 mile per hour range through these areas for the next few days. Also part of that are the clouds that are coming in. Right now, though, it's looking gorgeous out to Orange County, specifically the California Adventure Radiator Springs area where folks enjoying their Easter Sunday out at the park, the happiest place on earth. And the temps really cooling down now. We're showing 64 in Fullerton, 63 for Riverside, 45 for right with the mountains nice and cold right now and we're seeing clouds cooler temps and yes I'll let you know when the rain and snow get here when I come back with the seven day forecast in just a little bit. Right now, I'm going to turn it over back to you, Ruta Bay and Jory. Go ahead. All right, Danny, thank you. Christians around the world paused to mark Easter Sunday today. There was quite a dramatic Easter Sunday display in La Crescenta this morning. Churchgoers found a 14-foot-tall tombstone blocking the entrance to La Crescenta Presbyterian Church. They had to roll it out of the way before heading into the 9 a.m. service today. The pastor says it symbolizes the stone that covered the tomb of Jesus. As we pull it away from the doors of the church, we uh, remember that the Lord rose from the dead, and we also remember that uh, He uh, brings us out of sin and darkness. Once that giant stone was rolled away, a contemporary service began inside. And an Easter Sunday celebration at, uh, at Our Lady of the Angels Cathedral in downtown L.A. Today, Archbishop Jose Gomez presided over the Mass of the Resurrection of Our Lord today for thousands of faithful parishioners who renewed their baptismal promises. Easter is the holiest holiday on the Christian calendar, marking the day they believe Jesus rose from the dead. And there was a large Easter celebration today in downtown L.A. Skid Row. The Midnight Mission hosted its annual Easter and Passover brunch today. The homeless were provided a hot meal and enjoyed some live entertainment, a welcome change in the harsh reality of many people's lives. Among the celebrity volunteers, actor Jesse Lu Lucan of Justified and Maya Sojin of Castle. As always, volunteers are an essential part of the big event and everything else the mission does. We only do it and have only been able to do it for the last 101 years because of the support we receive from Angelinos uh, and we hope and that we'll be able to continue to do that for as long as there's a need. And Disney volunteers were among those lending a hand. Easter bags were also handed out. Eyewitness News returns with these new stories. Two new arrests in London related to terror allegations, and these suspects are some of the youngest ever. Also, peace is restored, and a cleanup effort is underway after Kentucky fans took out their frustrations following last night's Final Four of 10. And later, debate is raging in Washington today over a nuclear deal with Iran. We'll hear from one of the local lawmakers speaking.
Shocking new details in the bloodbath at a university in Kenya. Kenyan officials say they have identified the son of a government official as one of the gunmen who carried out the massacre. That news came as grieving Christians prayed, sang, and clapped during an Easter service at a Catholic church in the town where it happened. The Christian minority is in fear following Thursday's attack. Nearly 150 people were killed. Authorities say an Islamic militant group singled out Christians. Survivors have been reunited with their families in Nairobi. Two new arrests overseas in the fight against terror. In London, two teens are being investigated for their alleged involvement with terrorists. These are just the latest in a string of arrests connected to people supporting or joining the Islamic State. ABC's Bazi Kanani has more. Tonight, British authorities announcing another two teenagers arrested for terrorism, including a 14-year-old boy, one of the youngest known to be arrested, and a 16-year-old girl. Meanwhile, as the influence of ISIS grows, young men and women joining their ranks from around the world, including three London schoolgirls last seen on this surveillance video after disappearing in February, spotted here preparing to cross into Syria. Back at home this week, the FBI arrested two women in New York, ages 28 and 31, who agents said idolized al-Qaeda and ISIS, studied bomb-making online, and said they wanted to be part of the last war, the big war inside the U.S. Neighbors were shocked. It's incredible. I can't believe it. And another young woman in Philadelphia, who authorities say called herself Young Lioness. Tonight, American officials increasingly concerned about the terror group's internet savvy reaching into the U.S. online. The messaging that's coming out is having a reach inside this country. The two teens arrested in Britain this week are both home tonight. They were released on bail until their next court date in May. And that was ABC's Bazi Kanani reporting. There's a lot of cleaning up to do in Lexington, Kentucky, where disappointed fans rioted after Kentucky's Final Four loss last night. Many people there spent Easter Sunday picking up trash and beer bottles. Wisconsin knocked off the Wildcats in the men's basketball Final Four in Indianapolis yesterday. Kentucky had entered the Final Four as the favorite to win the national championship at a perfect 38-0. Upset? Fans took to the streets, even lighting a few fires. At least 31 people were arrested, mostly for disorderly conduct and alcohol intoxication. Yeah, it's not going to help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not at all. Well, drink change, all you want. That's right. Wisconsin still played better. 364 days well, to there get that. back there. There's yeah. that. I want you guys to notice this shot behind yeah, you. Jay has set up a great shot. So Look at the way here. Camera. Look at the city in the clouds. No, you're right good. Now. You're good. You've, you've got a smaller than average head, Jory. You're okay. <laughs> no, that's gorgeous. Like all the clouds there hanging over Angels. I mean, just beautiful. And it's been that kind of day where you see temperatures on the cooler side. The clouds are moving in, being part of a weather picture as well. And that'll really take over things for us before the week is done. In fact, bringing us some rain and snow as well. Let's go outside and I'll get my big head out of the way and show you another gorgeous view of Southern California. How about this? Our Laguna Beach HD camera and there things are looking great here now. The marine layer is starting to make its move in to the coastal spots hinting at the cloud cover building up to give us that rain and snow that's on the way. Right now, though, downtown L.A. looks pretty good, but certainly cool. 63 degrees, the temperature, 54% relative humidity, more moisture gathering in the air. And today, finally a day where the average temp, 72, exceeds the temp we topped off today. 71 was a downtown high. Those gorgeous sunsets we've been showing you happening right now at 717. Sunrise tomorrow, 634. Watch the changes in our weather courtesy of this low spinning towards our north we can see it up close that that low drops into our area tuesday into wednesday about a six eight hour period of rain wind and snow to bring us uh, you know a quarter half an inch of rain and snow about two to four inches tonight though cool numbers down the 40 some spots in the 30s like the mountain areas now we look at highs tomorrow much cooler than it has been a couple of days ago we we're showing 80s and 90s now we're showing 60s for the highs tomorrow just about everywhere you look with barstow and palm springs in the 70s the only exceptions we look ahead and watch what's coming our way on the seven-day power back whether we go partly cloudy tomorrow here comes the rain late tuesday to early Wednesday morning, gone by Wednesday afternoon, a nice Thursday. Friday, set up for another transition, back to another brief rain period chance, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Gone by Sunday afternoon, enough to still get up to 74 by Sunday afternoon after a kind of a cloudy start during the morning hours. Valley's Inland Empire, we get that about a half an inch of rain through the valley areas. Again, Tuesday night to Wednesday morning, about six, eight hours of uh, decent rain. Clearing out late Wednesday, Thursday looks great. Friday, more clouds start to move in. 
Then that next rain chance comes in Saturday night into Sunday morning, out by Sunday afternoon, enough to get up to near 80 degrees. A real change coming our way on Sunday. For the beach areas, we'll see clouds and cooler conditions tomorrow. Winds kicking up as well. And then we'll think about a quarter inch of rain from the system Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon, sunshine returns. Really nice on Thursday. Clouds move back in Friday. Next system hits late Saturday into early Sunday, but then gone by Sunday afternoon to get up near 70 degrees by the time the sun works on its Sunday afternoon hours. Now the mountain areas. Winds there, 65 mile per hour gust, dangerous. Also, the rain and the snow level drop down about 5,000 feet, two to four inches at the resort level. And then we will see some dust in the snow around 4,000 feet, clearing out our next chance of showers Saturday night into Sunday morning. The high deserts, partly cloudy tomorrow. The winds strong, gusting, 55 miles per hour. Again, that pre uh, brief period of rain Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. A break Thursday, Friday, and then back again Saturday night to Sunday morning. Light chance of rain, light rain amounts, but any little droplets will do. We'll take them. Right. Improvement, yes, regardless. That is. That's right. right. Danny, thanks. Yep. Coming up next, a young man facing a huge challenge is now reaching out for help. Yeah, still to come, we'll have details on the uphill battle he's now tackling and show you how you can help. Plus, thousands descend upon downtown L.A. to celebrate a Sikh holiday. We'll show you the delightful sights and sounds when we return. Welcome back. A former ABC7 cool kid is now fighting the battle of his life. We featured Raymond Alvarez of Mira Loma back in 2009 for his involvement in the community, including raising money for cancer research. Raymond was finishing school to become a dental assistant and was working as a teller at Citibank. That's until four months ago when he was diagnosed with stage three cancer. Several days later, he began chemotherapy. Raymond has set up a GoFundMe account to get help with his expenses. He has now depleted all of his money, gone into debt, and his parents are struggling to help support him and pay his medical bills. This has uh, affected my life in so many ways, ways I never thought possible. The doctors automatically told me I would have to stop school, I would have to stop work. Anything that required me 
to be physically active or physically there, chemo is working. Um, that said, we still have uh, quite a bit to go. If you'd like to help Raymond, you can just go to his GoFundMe page and donate. It's GoFundMe.com slash Ray Alvarez. There is a dramatic event happening right now at an Armenian cathedral in Burbank. A descendant of survivors of the Armenian genocide has entered a glass enclosure. Agassi Vartanian has begun a 55-day fast. He wants to bring attention to the Armenian genocide during the year 1915. The genocide is blamed on the Turkish government, but for the past 100 years, Turkey has refused to acknowledge it. Well, it may be Easter, but today also marks a special holiday in the Sikh tradition. The Sikh community of California celebrated Baisaki at the LA Convention Center today. Each year, the event attracts thousands of people. It dates back to 1699 in Punjab, India, and coincides with the festival of the first spring harvest. In Sikh tradition, it is a time of renewal and rekindling of spirit. Sikhs are guided by the principles of faith in one God, working hard and sharing with others. We're updating our top stories next at 7.30. Also, proof that the Easter Bunny knows how to make an entrance. We'll take you to one of the most unique Easter egg hunts in all of Southern California. And a small plane comes down in the middle of a Central California strawberry field. Hear how the people on board are doing today. A violent collision kills two people and leaves one person fighting for her life. I'm Darcia Phillips, and I'll tell you what may have caused the crash just ahead. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56 with live breaking news.
Breaking news at 7.30, an arrest has been made in connection with a shooting that injured an MTA bus driver. I'm Rudabay Shabazi in for Giovanna Lara. I'm Jory Rand. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56. LA's only live local newscast at 7.30 p.m. The shooting happened around 2.45 this afternoon at Bellevue Avenue and Coronado Street in Echo Park. One bullet went through the bus's windshield, grazing the driver. Within the last hour, detectives have arrested a suspect. That person is only described as a man in his 20s. Investigators do not know if he was specifically targeting the bus. Police are looking for whoever attacked a man and a woman in Manhattan Beach. Detectives say the victims were sitting in the, on the stand just after midnight when the suspect approached. He appeared to have a handgun and forced the man to lie face down in the stand while he sexually assaulted the woman. Police searched the area after the assault but were not able to find the suspect. Two people are dead and another is seriously injured following a violent car crash at North Puente Avenue and Amar Road. As Eyewitness News reporter Darsha Phillips tells us, one of the witnesses says the driver was speeding, possibly even racing another car. A white Chevy Malibu barely recognizable after a violent crash on Puente Avenue. The biggest thing we see out here as far as collisions are concerned are alcohol and speed. We don't know if alcohol is a factor here. Speed is clearly a factor. According to a witness, the driver of the Chevy Malibu may have been racing a base sedan when the crash occurred. We don't know if that was actually a race going on or just two vehicles traveling at a high rate of speed. So that's under investigation. The 26-year-old male driver careened into a parked truck. He, along with the 19-year-old backseat passenger, were pronounced dead at the scene. The front passenger, a female adult, was taken to the hospital with major injuries. The crash site here on Puente Avenue is still littered with personal belongings from the three victims. And also the impact of the crash mangled this chain link fence. Nearby residents did not want to speak on camera, but say they heard the crash and say often they see people going too fast down Puente Avenue. The speed limit on this road is 40, 45 miles an hour. We have him traveling significantly faster than that, according to our witness. In La Puente, I'm Darsha Phillips, ABC7 Eyewitness News. We have some breaking news out of San Bernardino County. A crash between a tour bus and another vehicle has left nine people injured. It's all happening at Valley Boulevard and Linden Avenue. We're told one person had to be extricated, but that person is now free of the wreck. The other eight people are said to have minor injuries. In Buena Park, a car slams into a police cruiser overnight and distracted driving may be to blame. The crash happened around 11.30 last night on Magnolia Avenue near the 91 freeway. Police believe a young female driver was distracted when she ran a red light and crashed right into the cruiser. Both cars ended up in the median. She had a passenger in her car as well. Everyone involved was checked out, but firefighters at the scene said no one was injured. A San Bernardino man is facing attempted murder charges after allegedly trying to run over two police officers. Police say yesterday afternoon the officers were leaving an investigation on the 1500 block of Pomalo Street when a black BMW SUV charged them. The officers got out of the way just in the nick of time. A chase then ensued, but the SUV managed to lose them. Eventually, the officers located the vehicle at an apartment complex and identified the driver as Terrence Cummings. Police then took him into custody. We are learning more today about a deadly officer-involved shooting in the city of Orange. Anaheim officers went to arrest a female suspect with an outstanding, uh, outstanding warrant Saturday morning. She was in a car with a man and one other person. Officers pulled him over where they say a man then got out of the car holding a gun. That man wound up being shot and killed by police. He has now been identified as 32-year-old Paul Anthony Anderson, the woman Myra Frausto was taken into custody. The officers were wearing body cameras at the time, and that video will now be turned over to investigators. Still no sign of a man wanted in the kidnapping of a two-year-old girl from Gardena. Police say they need your help tracking this child predator down. On Thursday, someone snatched the little girl out of the backseat of her mom's car at a car wash. Two hours later, investigators found her in a parking lot 10 miles away. Police say the girl was injured, but they aren't revealing the details. They believe a white Nissan Altima seen in the alley behind the car wash and also where the girl was found could be linked to that abduction. Anyone with information is
is urged to call Gardena Police at 310-323-7911. Now to that landmark deal with Iran over its nuclear program. The White House is facing pressure both at home and abroad this weekend from lawmakers who say scrutiny is essential for a good deal and one strong ally who says the deal isn't tough enough. ABC's Bazi Kanani reports. I think this is a, a bad deal. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu putting on the full court press Sunday, taking to American airwaves to rail against the U.S.-led nuclear deal with Iran. For the preeminent terrorist state of our time to have a free path, an easy path to uh, nuclear weapons, endangers Israel, endangers the region, endangers the world, endangers everyone listening to me right now. His message comes one day after President Obama used his weekly address to begin selling the agreement to both the public and Congress. It's a good deal, a deal that meets our core objectives. Right now, that deal includes unprecedented inspections and monitoring of Iran's nuclear facilities for at least 20 years. It also means the nation will have to roll back its programs, dismantle equipment, and make sure major plants are for civilian use only. In exchange, economic sanctions against Iran will be lifted over time. Some leaders in Congress say the House and Senate should have final approval, legislation President Obama promises to veto. I know there are a lot of details that will be worked out over the next several months, and that's why, on behalf of the American people, Congress needs to be playing a role. But it's not a done deal yet. All sides must now hammer out the details before the June 30th deadline. What's yes. the chances of it getting all the way? I, I don't Sorry. have any way to make that prediction. 50-50? I'm not going to play that. This is a way of making the world safer. Three more months to sell the deal and get everyone to sign on the dotted line. Bazi Kanani, ABC News, Washington. California Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein is also weighing in on Israel's opposition to the Iran deal, saying Netanyahu is not bringing a better deal to the table. To be candid with you, uh, this can backfire on him. And I, I wish that he would contain himself because he has put out no real alternative. In his uh, speech to the Congress, no real alternative. Since then, no real alternative. Feinstein added that she doesn't believe the deal will threaten Israel's survival. Tense moments up the coast in Santa Maria as a small plane makes an emergency landing in a strawberry field. The pilot and two passengers, his son and son's fiance, were on board when authorities say mechanical failure forced them to land in a strawberry patch near the Santa Maria airport. That pilot suffered minor cuts and bruises. His passengers were not hurt. Officials say the pilot has 50 years of flying experience and did a great job landing safely. Yeah, great job indeed. It was certainly a picture-perfect day to spend outside today. Yeah, and that includes the annual Easter Fest in downtown L.A. New City Church of Los Angeles puts on the fiesta every year at Grand Hope Park at 9th and Hope. Some 2,500 kids were expected to attend, taking part in arts and crafts, games, and hopping on bounce houses. And it wouldn't be Easter without an egg hunt. Organizers hid 10,000 eggs this year. 100% of the proceeds go to assisting homeless children in downtown L.A. Looks like fun. And forget hopping down the bunny trail. Yeah, that's right. This Easter, Peter Cottontail got some heavy-duty aerial assistance thanks to the Condor Squadron. The Easter Bunny flew in by helicopter to greet hundreds of kids waiting for him at the squadron in Van Nuys. More than 300 kids and their families come out every year for the event for lunch, games, prizes, and, of course, an Easter egg hunt. And this year was no different. The best part, all that fun is free. I think the race with the tortoise might have finished differently if we <laughs> had that kind of air support the first time around. Much more news still to come here on Eyewitness News on LA 56. Easter Sunday services are taking place around the world today. We'll take you to Vatican City for the Pope's message of peace. And the first family attended Easter service today. Hear what churchgoers were encouraged not to do. Hi there, I'm Danny Romero with that gorgeous sunset shot of Angeles behind me and a little bit of wind action going on. It's a little shaking. I'll tell you about the winds and about some rain, wind, and snow on the way.
President Barack Obama and his family attended an Easter service today. They stopped by the Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Attendees captured these images in video and posted them online. The first family was welcomed to the historic church by the pastor there. That church dates back nearly 200 years. Churchgoers traditionally walk around to shake hands and give hugs during the greetings portion of the service, but the pastor encouraged those in the crowd today to stay in their seats as the sanctuary was tightly secured with Secret Service agents. The weather didn't deter Christians from flocking to the Vatican to take part in a special Easter Mass with the Pope. Tens of thousands of faithful braved a rainstorm to attend services in St. Peter's Square. The Pope also called for peace in conflict-torn countries around the world, and he praised the framework nuclear agreement reached with Iran as an opportunity to make the world a safer place. Britain's Queen Elizabeth attended the traditional Easter service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Her Majesty and her husband, Prince Philip, were joined by other members of the royal family. Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge, who are expecting their second child later this month, did not attend the Mass, nor did Prince Charles and his wife, Camilla. After the service, the Queen was given a bunch of daffodils by a seven-year-old boy before leaving in a maroon Rolls Royce. Roy Rolls Royce. You got it? Nice, eh? Yeah, it's still a nice car. Coming up next, you may have spent Easter at the beach, but these folks hit the slopes. Find out where the winter weather is still falling. And in sports, a dip in a greenside pond in the fading light. It can only mean a major accomplishment. Highlights from Rancho Mirage ahead. We saw some marine layer this morning, but not before people had a chance to check out a spectacular sunrise. This picture was taken by an Eyewitness News viewer in Newport Beach and sent to us on our ABC7 app. Gorgeous. 
Thank you for sharing that great picture. And remember, if you have pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, send them to us using the hashtag ABC7 Eyewitness and join our circle of eyewitnesses. And while we were seeing sun, it's a snowy Easter at Lake Tahoe Resorts. They're getting about four inches of new powder there today. Skiers and riders hit the slopes at North Star California Resort. They shared these photos with us. This is the first of two snowstorms hitting the area this week. Along with the snow, cold temperatures in the mid to low 20s are expected there. All right, yeah. and back here at home, yeah. beautiful sunset now. Yeah, gorgeous. Started the day with a gorgeous Beautiful sunrise. shots again. We've got some snow coming our way as well. And yeah. about the same amount, you know, two to four inches or so in the resort level. So, you know, skiers, I guess, you want to, you know, wax up and get ready. There's uh, some new snow coming our way to add to it and some rain, of course, with that as well. Get your galoshes ready. Here we go. Outside, taking a look at what things are looking at right now. And truly, not a bad view of things. We look about the winds. We want to talk about that first because... Uh, those are strong still, and we enough to get wind advisories up in those mountain and desert areas right now. The winds are in that 25, 35 mile per hour sustained category with gusts 50, even 60 miles per hour. All these beige areas are under that wind advisory, and that'll hold through late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at 2 a.m. to be exact. So we're seeing that in the mountain areas, we're seeing in the desert areas as well. So all the way through, we'll find some of those uh, Coachella Valley under wind advisory too. So all those spots, very windy, and everybody getting kind of a breezy at least over the next couple of days as we get ready for the weather to change drastically from the warm 80s and 90s had a couple of days ago to now some cool moist weather coming in. Irvine Spectrum camera shows Orange County looking pretty good right now in downtown LA. Mostly clear skies and certainly the cool of the evening upon us. 63 degrees right now, 54 percent relative humidity and we're looking at the clouds moving in thanks to this low towards our north bringing rain north of San Francisco. And look at that counterclockwise circulation indicating the low that's out there and that's going to drop down to us next couple of days by Tuesday night into Wednesday. That's our uh, six to eight hour rain period. The thing, a quarter inch of rain, half an inch of rain in some upslope spots and the snow, as we mentioned, two to four inches of snow with this cold air and strong winds too for a brief weather event Tuesday night to Wednesday morning. But then a second one moves in Saturday night, Sunday morning, about the same length of time, you know, four to six hours. Lowest tonight, kind of on the cold side, 39 in Lancaster. Then tomorrow, a cloudy, cool day, getting ready for the rain. So only 60s for the highs about everywhere you look. Colder, of course, up in the mountains, right wood at 45 for the afternoon high. Big Bear at 46. Now we look ahead to the seven day. Power back, your weather and watch it change. Clouds tomorrow. Here comes that rain Tuesday into Wednesday, but gone by Wednesday afternoon. Clearing out nicely Thursday. Then the next system sets up for Friday. Moving in and out quickly Saturday night into Sunday morning by Sunday afternoon. Sunshine and 74 for the high. For the valleys and the Inland Empire, partly cloudy tomorrow. Breezy conditions, about a half an inch of rain in those inland spots. And that continues Tuesday night to Wednesday morning. Gone by Wednesday afternoon. A gorgeous Thursday. Here come the clouds for the next system on Friday, Saturday. Gone by Sunday afternoon, up enough to get to 78 for the afternoon high. A real change in that weather within one 24-hour period. Beach is cool and cloudy to start tomorrow. Here comes that rain, about a quarter inch or so in most coastal spots. And then done by Wednesday afternoon. Thursday looks clear. System number two starts setting up on Friday, moves through Saturday night into Sunday morning. Gone by Sunday afternoon. Mountain areas. Winds are strong, 65 mile per hour gusts, that snow level down to 5,000 feet, a dusting possible around 4,000, two to four inches of snow when it's all said and done Tuesday, Wednesday, then a little break late Wednesday to Thursday, then the second system moves through Saturday into Sunday. We see that system really kind of nice over the area, things looking very, very good over Southern California. And then we see Sunday clearing out by the afternoon, 55, not bad at all. For the high deserts, we're looking at some winds blowing in. Again, the strong winds in the deserts gusting to 55 miles per hour. That system again going Tuesday night to Wednesday morning, clearing out by Thursday. We look to Friday, partly sunny skies, and then another brief little system moving through Saturday into Sunday. We'll take all the rain we can get. Ruta Bay and Jory, go ahead. Thanks, Danny. We have an update on breaking news we're following in San Bernardino County now. We're now told five people have been hurt in a crash between a tour bus and another vehicle. It happened just before 7 at Valley Boulevard and Linden Avenue. Fire officials say a passenger vehicle went into the side of the tour bus. The driver of that vehicle was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Four other people have minor injuries. Time to talk sports. The Lakers and Clippers meeting up at Staples tonight. And regardless of what you may have heard, both of these teams do still have something to play for. The Clippers looking to improve their playoff standing 
The Lakers looking to improve their draft standing. Thank you very much. It took about four minutes for Blake Griffin to find DeAndre Jordan, the big fellow with the easy finish. Jabari Brown, one of the few bright spots for the Lakers this season. He knocks down his only three-pointer of the first half, but the Lakers trailed by seven after the first quarter. Clips and Chris Paul put the foot to the gas in the second quarter. His lay-in made it an 11-point game. Clippers hammering the Lakers. They lead 49-36 at the half. Meantime, in Indiana, just eight months after a horrific leg injury, Paul George returned to a standing ovation today in front of the home crowd. It didn't take long for George to make his presence felt. This one puts the Pacers up six. George racked up 13 points in 15 minutes today, including three from behind the arc. Pacers blow out the heat 112-89. They now trail Boston by just one game for that final playoff spot in the East. On to Chicago where a random game of horse broke out. Kyrie Irving launches to beat the first quarter horn. But teammate J.R. Smith, he's already got an H, an O, an R, and an S. He doesn't want to get that E, so at the end of the first half, he drains that game. Continues later. Irving fires one up from beyond half court to beat the shot clock. Smith couldn't match it, so he gets the E, spells horse, he loses, but the Cavaliers win. They go on to beat the Bulls 100-94. to Finally, after three days of perfect weather, Mission Hills Country Club turned into a desert wind tunnel today. Morgan Prestel ignored the nasty conditions. Her approach on the par 5 18th nearly flies in for the Eagle 3. She went to the clubhouse at 8 under, hoping that score would stand. Brittany Lincecum eagled 18 to win this same tournament six years ago. She does it again today. That eight-footer drops her to nine under and ties for the lead, so Pressel is out. It was up to Stacy Lewis on the closing hole of birdie, and she's the champ. Pushes it left, so on to the extra hole. After Lewis bogeyed, Lincecum taps in for par, and the traditional leap into the green side pond must have been a cold one in that fading light. She wins that major championship. Congrats. To her. All right. Well, up next, should you swipe left or right? A look at the new film that pokes fun at online dating. And there's positive news for Joni Mitchell. We have an update on the singer's condition.
Encouraging news for singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell. According to a new statement on her website, the 71-year-old is getting stronger each day. She was taken to the hospital last Tuesday after she was found unconscious in her Los Angeles home. Doctors put her in intensive care and performed some tests. The statement says Mitchell remains in the hospital, but that she's now resting comfortably. A new film takes a comedic look at the world of online swipe dating. Entertainment guru George Pinocchio has the story. Let's see what his pathetic opening line is going to be. <laughs> what Now explores what the dating world is like in this era of social media. On the dating site Tinder, for example, for any potential love connections, you swipe right to like or left to pass. What do you know for sure viewers will get if they come to see your movie? I think they're really going to understand the whole aspect of dating. If you're, on, if you're on Tinder, if you're on one of those dating apps, you'll relate to it. What do you do for work? Um, uh, work, uh, uh, uh. What Now is a small budget movie made by friends. People judge uh, very quickly on what you do for a living, your social media status, your followers. So the theme at the end really is to let people know that, you know, all that aside, what matters most is how much you would enjoy being with that person when none of that other stuff is around. I just texted her. Any response? No, she started typing one and then stopped. That's the worst. It's just like, say what you're going to say. I can see your little dots. It sounds like you did a little bit of research so you could write this. Uh, yeah. They say write what you know. So there's some, there's some truth to some of the dates. <laughs> You'll see some famous faces show up in cameos in this film. What else will you see in this unrated adventure? I'll let Kristen Carey tell you about the woman she plays. This character is a kick. You, she's very deceiving. She comes off as a very lovely woman, and, well, let's just say she's Fifty Shades of Crazy. And, and you'll see in her sex chamber. I gave a little too much away. <laughs> he takes selfies all day and put 85 different pound signs on them. Pound this, pound that. Hashtags. What? The TikTok two things called hashtags. What Now is available now on Video On Demand. George Pinocchio, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Tic-tac-toe things. It took me a long time to figure <laughs> that out. The tic-tac-toe things are actually hashtags. That's what it means. That looks like a funny movie. Could be. And you thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News at 7 here on LA 56. LA 56 Weekend Theater is next. Eyewitness News continues at 11 p.m. on ABC 7 and anytime on abc7.com. Remember, you can get your news 24 hours a day on our ABC 7 Facebook page and on Twitter. And we'll see you tomorrow night at 7 right here on LA 56. Have a great night. Happy Easter.